TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Jerusalem pledges its enemies will pay a heavy price for harming the state of Israel. The United States, France and Germany pledge over half a billion US dollars for Lebanon, more than half of a one billion dollars pledge by 70 countries altogether. The Western-backed Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas announces his aspiration for the so-called State of Palestine to join BRICS. Jerusalem will make its enemies pay a heavy cost to include the Islamic Republic of Iran for the belligerent war of aggression against the State of Israel and its people. Following a major U.S. intelligence leak of Israel's alleged preparatory plans for the looming attack on Iran, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant visited one of the bases, which were cited in the leaked top-secret intelligence documents, during the course of which he highlighted to Air Force pilots that anyone who harms Israel are paying a heavy price. You have the privilege to participate in the war of seven fronts and on all of these fronts the IDF is present and the Air Force is present Gaza, Lebanon, Judea and Samaria, Syria, Iraq, Yemen and Iran. Everywhere they tried to hurt us, they paid a heavy price and whoever had dreams in Gaza of defeating us and beating us a year ago. Today he is knowing that dream after there is no more sin war and a long line at the top and everything that was done there by the IDF. Jerusalem's top defense official went on to stress that once Iran is attacked, everyone will fully comprehend the significant preparatory work which Israel had prepared for. The Air Force is a key element in this matter and anyone who tries to harm us will be harmed, and this is also true for Iran. After we attack Iran, both in the state of Israel and in other places will understand what your preparation process includes and your preparation and readiness, and we have very high confidence in your abilities. Personally in each of you, as a group and as a squadron, squadrons and as the entire IAF branch, and of course, full confidence in the IDF. It is important to know that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, in a joint press conference with Qatari Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Mohammed bin Abdulrahman Thani in Doha, stressed that the United States fully supports Israel's right to self-defense, while further emphasizing to Iran that any future attack by the Islamic Republic against Israel would severely harm the Ayatollah regime's strategic interests. The statement by Washington's top diplomat was made earlier today, after Secretary Blinken had initially visited Israel earlier this week for meetings with Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and President Yitzhak Herzog, who thanked the Biden administration for providing Israel with its most advanced THAAD system, along with additional aerial defenses and other capabilities to confront any foreign threat. I want to thank the administration for the new THAAD system, which has been installed in Israel. We are, of course, ready and operating in various fronts serving a great cause for the free world. The Israeli head of state continued by addressing the Lebanese front, which President Herzog underlined, is part of a major campaign which, at the end of it all, is led and commanded in Tehran. As for the northern front, we are in a different situation there. We've been constantly attacked for a year already, and definitely in the last few weeks, constantly attacked from Lebanon, and that is why we have to take all the steps possible to eradicate the capabilities of Hezbollah, to move forward in preventing the onslaught against the citizens of Israel and the cities and towns. Their attacks with drones, missiles, rockets, their attack on the private home of the Prime Minister, it's all part of a major campaign, which at the end of it all is led 
and commanded in Tehran, and that is why, of course, a major answer has to be made towards Tehran. While the Secretary's chief focus included matters related to the Gaza Strip before leaving Israel to Saudi Arabia and then onward to Qatar, Blinken emphasized the importance of preventing regional hostilities from escalating further. Even as we're dealing with Gaza, with the hostages, with the humanitarian situation, it's also been an imperative for us to try to make sure that this conflict doesn't spread. We are resolute in our defense of Israel when it comes to attacks it's receiving from Iran, from Iran's proxies. And we stand with Israel and will always stand with Israel in its defense. It's also very important that Israel respond in ways that do not create greater escalation and do not risk spreading the conflict. With Hezbollah and Lebanon, uh, we're working intensely uh, to reach agreements on the effective implementation of 1701, the UN Security Council resolution that many years ago should have avoided what we're seeing now, but didn't because it's never been implemented. It is important to know that prior to Secretary Blinken's visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman hosted Jordan's King Abdullah II for related talks in Riyadh, and before the Secretary's trip to Doha, Qatari Emir Tamim bin Hamad Thani visited Berlin, Germany, where he had met with Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Following his meeting with the Qatari Emir, Chancellor Scholz also hosted Finnish President Alexander Stubb, during the course of which the volatile situation in the Middle East was also discussed. Nach dem Tod von Hamas Chef Sinwa after the death of Hamas leader Sinwar, there is hope that a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip is now approaching, contingent with Hamas finally releasing the remaining Israeli hostages. With regard to the situation in Lebanon, Hezbollah must withdraw from the border area with Israel in accordance with UN Resolution 1701, and real peace in the region is only conceivable if there is a credible process towards a two-state solution. Uh, and of course, the other raging conflict is that of a war between Israel and Palestine uh, and uh, Israel and Lebanon. Uh, I'm at two minds whether to bring these two conflicts together, uh, but the only thing that is sure is that we have to solve them one way uh, or another. And I think the window of opportunity will start uh, opening up after the U.S. elections, going towards the inauguration of the next president of the United States. And of course, Germany's role uh, in all of this uh, as a leader in Europe uh, is instrumental. Meanwhile, in Paris, French President Emmanuel Macron hosted a donors conference for Lebanon, in which Western nations collectively pledged almost 1 billion U.S. dollars for the war-torn country. In the immediate term, massive aid must be provided to the Lebanese population, whether it is for the hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the war or the communities that are hosting them. The United Nations has launched an appeal for 426 million euros. France will provide 100 million euros at this conference. What is needed is simply to shelter families, feed children, care for the wounded, and continue to provide schooling for children. Solutions must be found quickly because we must at all costs prevent the displacement of people from the south, Beirut and other regions of Lebanon, and from creating new divisions among the Lebanese people. Alongside the French pledge of 100 million euros, German Foreign Minister Annalena Bayerbock announced Berlin's pledge of 96 million euros, which is equal to about 104 million U.S. dollars. Germany will provide a further 96 million euros in humanitarian and development aid for the people of Lebanon. We are making it clear that we not only see the suffering in Lebanon these days, but that we are taking action. We are supporting the people on the ground, who for the most part only want one thing, to live in peace and security in the future, just like so many people in Israel. It is important to know that the United States outspent all of the other donor nations with a pledge of about $300 million, while the Islamic Republic of Iran, which is essentially responsible for the destruction in Lebanon, did not bother to show up at the event. Rather, Iranian President Masoud Pezeshkian 
visited the Russian city of Kazan for the BRICS leader summit together with Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Also attending the summit included the Western-backed Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, who seized the public stage to announce the Palestinian Authority's hope for the so-called State of Palestine to join BRICS. We renew in this respect the desire of the State of Palestine to join the BRICS group and by strengthening the partnership, dialogue and engagement in activities with its members. Affirming our full readiness to commit to its purposes and the practices and activities of this group in order to achieve its goals and achieve a strategic partnership to build a better future for humanity. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Separately, if you're blessed by our productions, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider supporting our programs with a donation. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you during our next update. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.